different standard open. Correct. So no slouch, and if anything, probably running a little bit below expectations these last couple opens. Now, Cohen is the youngster. He's on your left, as you mentioned, 16 years old. We saw him in Dallas last week, and I expect to see him there. He's being thought seized right now. You'll see a hand here of thought seized, devour flesh, a bile blight, a sign in blood, and then a desecration demon, along with two swamps, playing against Royce Walter, also playing black-white mid-range. Not too surprised to see this deck making a deep run in the tournament in these players' hands. Both these players have had success in the open series circuit, but Huey Jensen, Owen Turtenwald, a lot of the members of the Pantheon all chose to play this version of Black Devotion at the Pro Tour. It's very powerful, and I believe that the tipping, the printing of Keeps Aquilus was the tipping point for this deck. Yeah. It went from fringe player to perhaps standard's best deck because now the mana is very stable. Cohen going to play a swamp, and now here's a thought seize from him. So the sign of blood is gone, but he will thought seize his opponent. He will see a Temple of Silence along with the Caves of Holios. There's a Pack Rat of Bob Light and a Hero's Downfall. This is how this matchup goes. Players targeting each other with discard, and then removal spells will clean up some things, and we'll see who can get the card advantage engines online here. Now, I think an edge that Royce may have in this matchup, typically you do not see Underworld Connections in Black White lists. They've been replaced with Breathe the Bones or Sign Blood or so forth. He does have three copies in his list, which is potentially a huge edge if this game comes down to a top decking war. Yeah, it's actually been a point of contention recently as Hero's Downfall is going to go to the graveyard. Jensen was a big fan of Underworld Connections, where a lot of people said, I'm actually a bigger fan of Sign and Blood in this type of deck. Jerry Thompson, a big proponent of Sign and Blood. Here is a Pack Rat that's going to come down. You know that's going to die in just a moment here, of course, as Cohen does have removal spells at the ready to take care of the rat. We'll see what ends up being the correct choice if you do go with Connections, Read the Bones, or Sign and Blood in this type of deck. Well, Underworld Connections is the most volatile of all the options. There's some matchups where Underworld Connections is uncastable. There's also some matchups where Underworld Connections is a win condition onto its own. Neither is really true about Sign and Blood. It's more of a stabilizing element for the deck, so even though they both draw cards, to me, they fulfill very different roles. Cohen opting to hold steady here. And now he will cast Bioblight to take care of that. Bioblight better at taking care of Packrath than the Devour Flesh is. Devour Flesh can take care of Obazidat or Blood Baron with Scopa. Yeah, Blood Baron's another thing both of these players have to be cautious of. Their black removal naturally doesn't work against it, and so they need to protect themselves from it as much as possible. Cohen only has one copy of Devour Flesh in his main deck this particular weekend. So he'll be holding on to that one tightly as here's a replacement pack rat after Walter did scry with Temple of Silence. So Cohen will play a Temple of Silence of his own, and now he will cast that Singleton Devour Flesh, so he is opening himself up to a Blood Baron with Scopa. Yeah, and there are three copies in Royce's list, so uh, knowing, it, knowing that this game goes on for a long time, there's a lot of horrible draws in Royce's deck waiting for him. What's important there is the missing of the land drop there from Walter. Now, he does have the Hero's Downfall to take care of the Desecration Demon, but Cohen is ahead on mana now. Now, there is a swamp before Walter does pass the turn back. Cohen draws his card for the turn. It's a copy of Thoughtseize. We'll see if he wants to fire this off now or maybe wait. Well, it seems worth casting now. I mean, a lot of this deck is proactive stuff, so might as well see what's going on. And there are fives and sixes in Royce's deck as well, so those could be stranded in his hand currently. Two Vile Blights does take one of them. A God the Shrine is to draw. That comes into play tap. Now we're at that sweet spot where both players have five mana. We'll see who finds the Blood Baron first. Walter will draw a card. Again, we know he has a Bob Light in his hand, not sure of the other card. And he will cast a Pack Rat. That's timely. From this spot, I believe Royce has a huge edge in the matchup with three copies of Underworld Connections to Noah's zero and three copies of Blood Baron of Escopa to Noah's one. Or three, rather. Sorry. One up to that. He goes to that if Cohen were to draw it, however, he could not cast. Yeah. Which is certainly a problem here. Now, Noah does have two removal spells right now in his hand in Ultimate Price and Hero's Downfall to take care of Pack Rat. And he's going to fire off the first one of these. And we'll see if Walter actually does want to make a rat in response here. And it looks like the answer is yes. So here is that. Going to discard Bob Blight. I think if you're Cohen, you probably fire off the Hero's Downfall now in case you do draw Blood Baron this turn. You want to be able to cast it. Let's see what he draws. Both players are in top decking mode. Just going to pass the turn back. Walter draws a card. It's a copy of Life Bane Zombie. Cohen will show you a Caves of Colios. Now he'll draw a card. He'll play the Caves, drew a swamp, pass the turn back. Walter is going to bash in for three. Cohen's going to go down to 13. Let's see if Walter is able to draw this turn. It's nothing. So now here's a Pack Rat from Cohen. That's a big draw for him as he's made his opponent discard a couple of Bio Blights already. Yeah, there's only three in Royce's list. So this Pack Rat with a very good shot of running away with the game. In for three comes the Life Bane Zombie. This is a Blood Baron of Vescopa. Excuse timely. me. 
So it is not impossible for pack rats to race from this spot, but the fact that Royce already has a substantial life toll advantage means yep. it's unlikely. Yeah, both creatures will attack. Owen is going to have to block here on the life bands. Obviously, can't afford to take another big hit. So down to 60 goes. Walter's going to go up to 23. That's a really important trade for Royce, though, to just manage the damage race that's going on right now. We'll discard a Goblet Shrine, so a Pack Rat will come into play. Cohen will draw a card for the turn. At the very worst, it's a Pack Rat, but it could be better than that. A card like Elspeth, which is a one-off in Cohen's deck, that's very important right now. He's got a Blood Baron of his own, so now the race gets very, very interesting. As Cohen rolls up his sleeves, knowing he might be able to get back into this thing now. Well, not just get back into it, but overtake this pretty quickly. Yep. I mean, as long as the Blood Barons are essentially bouncing off of one another, the Pack Rats give Noah a huge edge from the spot. So let's see what Walter can do here. Looked like he was going to steal this one. Now he's got to put the brakes on. Cohen will draw a card. Blood Baron will come into the red zone. It's four damage coming across. Walter down to 15. Cohen back up to a healthier 10. We'll simply pass the turn back over to Walter. And now we're, this is where this pack red edge is going to be able to manifest itself mm -hmm. for Noah. Now the big question here, of course, is do you make those pack rats bigger or not? It's kind of an interesting situation where Elspeth can really turn around a game here. Mm -hmm. So do you make them into four fours? Well, I think Noah can kind of split the difference here and do this if Elspeth shows up at minuses, then he can start making the rats 4-4. Four, four. And then for the time being, he can just leave the rats as they are. And once he's ready to alpha strike, then maybe he thinks about moving them to 4-4 four, four or 5-5. Five, five. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have to act just yet. The tough thing here for this Blood Baron is they can't attack or block. That's yeah. the really big thing. Because if he attacks, he takes a whole lot more on the way back from those very large pack rats. You saw a Mutaball get played there for Cohen. I'll make those pack rats bigger as well. One of the few cards I think that he would have been happy to draw and play that was a land. Temple of Silence may be better, but I wouldn't be surprised if he would just sort of discard a temple. Mutant Vault may have been the best draw he could have as far as lands are concerned. You can see Roy, the look on Royce's face. I mean, he's kind of up against it right now. He was so close. Yeah. Gonna play Desecration Demon. Cohen gonna draw a card. Blood Baron gonna safely attack again. So now Cohen's up to 18 and Walter's down to seven. Did get a great look at what that card was that Cohen drew. You can see the youngster figuring some things out here. He's just going to pass the turn back. Yeah, still no reason for him to rush or do anything, you know? Mm -hmm. As long as this keeps happening, Noah's going to win, so might as well force the action. Demon trigger on the stack. See if Cohen has any interest in maybe sacrificing something to that. And it looks like the answer is no. So now Blood Baron comes across. Cohen going to take four. He's back down to 14. Walter's back up to 11. Walter does play a swamp before passing the turn back. Pack Rat will be made, discarding a Desecration Demon. I think this is going to be the spot where Noah makes some sort of large alpha strike. Yeah, it might be everybody at this point. If he was willing to make a rat here and move him to four power, risking an Elspeth, I think that means it's time. Going on a fire at Mutaval. Those are 5-5 five, five rats now. Looks like he's going to attack with every single one of them. And that is going to do it. A timely draw of Blood Baron of Scopa for Noah Cohen does get him back into that game and lets him take it down. He's up a game with his black-white mid-range deck over Royce Walter. That was incredible, too, because it felt like that game had the making of first person to... Blood Baron wins. Yeah. Royce was the first one there and still lost. We'll take a look at the sideboards. They're probably going to be pretty similar, but we'll start with Royce Walters first. Three Doom Blade, a Drown Sorrow, two Sin Collector, two Nix Ram, three Duress, Underworld Connections, an Erebos God of the Dead, two copies of Deicide. I think the Erebos, the Underworld Connections, the two Sin Collectors, the three Duresses. Pretty standard stuff in this matchup. Now on this side, we've got Nobis Adata, Sin Collector, three Duress, four Doom Blade, three Life Fane Zombies, a Deicide, and then two copies of Drown and Sorrow. Um, do like Sync Collector for the same reasons you do. I think same thing can be said for Duress here as well, just ripping each other's hands apart. Uh, the big question for me is, do you want the additional Obes that I think Obes that's a pretty good card in the mirror. I feel like it's something you want. You just want to have more 
high impact top decks when the game attrition's out the way that it did. I mean, that, that first game there is a lot of what the matchup plays out of. Both players attack each other's hands, use removal spells on things like Pack Rat and the Secretion Demon, and then the first person to find a durable threat wins the game. You know where you can play the Black White Mirror match at? Uh, all sorts of standard tournaments. Also, SCG Game Night. SCG Game Night. You can do it there as well beginning in September. Again, we're very close to signups being concluded for September, and international signups are available as well. So make sure to get on there no matter what part of the world you happen to live in. Two pins and eight foil tokens each week. New pins and foils release each month every Wednesday night in September. Again, August 11th, the cutoff for getting ready to go for September. StarCityGames.com slash Game Night for more information. Looking forward to this, that bushy squirrel you can win at game night coming in September. As Patrick did mention, August 11th is the cutoff to have those in September. So if you do want to do it, bug your local tournament organizer or store owner. We can't wait to host these beginning in September where you can, if you'd like, play black, white, mid-range mirrors. And unlike the IQ circuit, let's say, where, you know, there's some uh, certain formats or certain sanctioning requirements that are required to run these, these are supposed to be very casual. So. Uh, the formats and sanctioning are up to the stores themselves. So don't worry about these being really competitive events. In fact, the whole point of these is for them to be a little bit more on the casual side. Looking forward to it in September as we're going to head back to our match right now, the black-white mid-range mirror. It looks like a lot of players are favoring this version of black over the any of the other ones right now. Again, this is the, the one that I would say performed the best. Don't have the statistics in front of me, but if you take a look at just the top eights and players that did play this archetype, you saw a lot of the Pantheon play this deck. You saw Owen Turtenwald and Huey Jensen make the top eight with this deck as well. It's one of those scenarios where it's hard to know whether or not is Black White the best deck, or is it one of many good decks and William Jensen and Owen Turnwald are the two best players on the planet? But uh, I do think that because Owen has been so consistent in playing Mono Black Devotion for this year, he's really avoided splashing, even when a lot of people were moving to green or moving to black or what have you. If he felt it was correct to add a second color, that to me says a lot, because Owen's instincts were definitely to play just the single colored version of Black Devotion most of the year. You know, we talked about on the last episode of Set Talks about, you know, who we think the best player is right now. You said Huey, and I went with Owen. Um, I was just thinking about it a little earlier, a little later in the now, week. Now, to clarify, in yeah. my mind, they're one and one A. Yeah, yeah, no, it's obviously yeah. neck and neck. I was thinking about that. You know, it's you know, it's a discussion that players like to have, and, you know, people who watch Magic like to have. You know, obviously, you can throw Reed into the conversation. I always feel like just for whatever reason, because we don't know Jeremy Dazani all that well, you know, we have seen Owen and Huey and, and Reed, and we know them pretty well as guys that come to the tournaments. You know, Dazani getting ninth at the Pro Tour, too, and locking up Player of the Year, and... You know, I, 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 it's crazy to say that I feel like the player of the year is almost underrated. It's weird, and, and it definitely is true. And I think that just have, has to have a lot to do with just, you know, my personal, uh, you know, engagement and how well I know Owen and Huey yeah. distorts the conversation a little bit. Tazani's had an incredible year, and if not for tiebreakers at the last Pro Tour, you know, who knows what kind of season he could have just had. Yeah, and who knows what the conversation we're even having. And he's still the too. player of the year yeah. I, yeah. in any scenario, but... He is a player that is, I, I agree with you, somehow underrated. Yeah, it's crazy to me. And not to take anything away from Owen or, or Huey or Reed, because, I mean, who are we kidding? You know, it, it's, you know, it might just be those four players are the four best players right now. To me, who Huey, knows? It's, Huey's accomplishments have spanned. It's not just this year. Sure. But, I mean, we have 15 years of evidence at this point to suggest he's one of the best that has ever played. Yeah. This, this is true. This is true. I always would like to watch him do battle. I believe in one of his Hall of Fame articles, not this year, but uh, last year or the year before, John Finkel said, it's very easy to imagine a world with a couple slightly different events where William Jensen is regarded as the greatest player of all time. It wouldn't surprise me. A couple more top finishes. And he is certainly well on his way right now, though. He's had one of the best years in Magic ever. Or if he was just more active during the mid-2000s where his activity sort of tapered off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he started working and stuff like that and yeah. stepped away for a little while, as a lot of players oftentimes do before eventually coming back to the game. We've seen it happen so many times before. Game number two between Cohen and Walter will be underway here in just a moment in the black-white mid-range mirror. You saw both players rip, rip apart each other's hands, and then it was who could top deck, excuse me, Blood Baron of Escopa, and actually they both did, but Cohen top decked his just in time. Just in time. He's got two in his hand right now. I don't know if that's a good place for those to be. You'd rather just draw those past the discard. Yeah. 
I think my my ideal opening hand in the mirror match is just discard spells and scry lands mm -hmm. instead of the big draws. Now here's a thought, Steve. You're gonna see Cohen's hand. He's got sign of blood, two copies of Blood Baron, a life bane zombie, which might seem a little strange to leave in, but that can take Blood Baron or Orbs of that. And then you've got Swamp Swamp and Goblet Shrine. Sin Collector as well. Actually yeah, a fair number true. a fair number of targets for in the mirror match. <laughs> you see Noah spreading around his hand a little bit here. Pick a card, any card. It looks like, wow, he's got to go a Life Bane Zombie. Well, it probably means that he has a, a Blood Baron of his own, yep. one would assume. It's just kind of strange because it's definitely the weakest card in his hand. Yeah. Of the ones that are there. In some respects, it is, but the matchup is a lot to do about Blood Baron, so. Maybe a Duress here. Yep. And that Duress is going to hit the sign in Blood. The card that was drawn for Cohen was a Knife Veil Spectre. That plays a big role in this matchup, too. Huge, huge card. Cohen will draw cards, copy of Temple of Silence. He's going to put that one into play. He'll take a look at the top. Can they consult the hand before putting that to the bottom? Pass it back over to Walter, who will untap his lands. He'll draw a card. You see, there's a Mutavolt over there. Don't know how much action he has right now. This would be a great spot for Royce to have some life bands of his own. He's just going to play a Thought Seize. That might be close enough. Couple of cards here to look at. Two Swamps, two Blood Barons, and a Knife Hill Spectre. We'll see what Walter does select here. Yeah, I think you got to start taking at least at least one of those Blood Barons. Now, of course, you don't love leaving your opponent with a Knife Hill Spectre when you're in the mirror. But Blood Baron is, you know, the card that wins the game more often than not. You can at least kill a Night Veil Spectre. Yeah. Although, perhaps Royce can't. I mean, if he was thinking that long about it, he may be currently soft to a Night Veil Spectre. I mean, you got to put him to the test right away. There's the second Mutable. I'm just going to pass the turn back. So Cone will draw a card. He's going to attack for two here. Uh-oh. This could get ugly quickly. Let's see what the top card is going to be. It's going to be a Bile Blight. Spectre can run away with things all by itself. Walter draws a card. It's a copy of, I believe, Devour Flesh. Now, this is a Blood Baron, so he's the first one to it. Cohen is going to untap. He will draw. It's a copy of Bio Blight. In comes the Spectre. Walter's going to go down to 12. Trigger that is a case of Coleos. That is going to come directly into play. And now this will allow Cohen to cast his Blood Baron with Scopa. The life race right now favors Noah. Yeah, and not, not only that, but... These Blood Barons basically just bounce off of each other, and having a Night Veil uncontested is a huge edge. Walter will bash in with his Blood Baron. It'll be 16 all in just a moment here. Now there's Devour Flesh. It's a big draw for Royce. I mean, he gets back to parity here. Yeah, the Devour Flesh may not seem like much, but both those creatures are a real headache. Yep. Royce can at least keep parity with one, but cannot beat both. So pass the turn back. Mutavolt is the draw. That's a pretty big one, actually. And Royce definitely got paid off for main phasing that Devour Flesh. Oh, if Noah, yeah. Noah untaps, it just puts that Mutavolt into play. I don't think Royce is catching up. So an exchange of four life will take place here. And we'll see if another uh, another Blood Baron is going to come down. You do have to be a little wary of a card like Elspeth in this matchup. They don't play a lot of them. Cohen's like this only has one. I'm not sure Royce has any. He has two copies. Okay, fair enough. So, you know, do you want him to play the second one? You don't really know, especially when Cohen actually hasn't gotten a look at his opponent's hand at all. So he doesn't know. Is he trying to lull me into a trap here? I'm not entirely sure. But I, Royce, it looks like, has picked up Underworld Connections this turn, which is why I like his build for the mirror match. Yeah, it seems pretty good, right? A card that Cohen does not have any copies of. So Connections are going to come down. We're going to activate that right away. Blood Baron's going to come in. That's going to allow Walter to gain some life back. And back and forth we do go, 19 to 15 now. There's a land before passing the turn back over to Cohen. Cohen will tap his one Blood Baron, draws a copy of Hero's Downfall. Creatures are pretty locked up here. Yeah, and Devour Flesh not and out for, for Owen here against the Muta Vaults that Royce has in play. Now, of course, Cohen's other Blood Baron of the Scope was taken by Thoughtseize, but, you know, the point, of course, I was trying to make is if he draws another one, would he deploy the second one? I think that's actually really scary to yeah, do. But I, I don't think he can... I mean, he can't win the game the way it's currently constructed. 
Blood Barons are essentially bouncing off of each other, and now there's a connections in play. So I think Noah's going to have to get a little risky. Well, we're going to see what happens here in just a moment. Let me do to the youngster Noah Cohen. Did top four our legacy up when we were in Dallas. Been doing a little bit of globe trotting on summer break. Summer break, yeah. excuse me. Pretty crazy. Also had a very, very nice looking legacy deck, his bug deck, and came up to me today and told me that the cards were in fact his own. That's pretty awesome. Soul owner. Those cards are older than him, some of yeah. them. Yeah. In comes the Blood Baron. Again, you're just gonna see the light holes go up and down and all around. And there's the, the Elspeth you alluded to. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Walter would have to lose his Blood Baron as well, but he'd probably be okay with that to get the other Blood Baron off the table. What's more important about this is that, you know, he can kind of pick and choose about how he wants to go about doing it. Well, he can also just plus this turn and then untap and minus if he feels he's better served. He doesn't have to just force the gun here. He can, he can generate some tokens here. I think it is pretty important that he gets really good use out of his Elspeth, though. You know, are the tokens going to be enough? Are you better off just minusing here, clear up the Blood Barons, and you, you're basically saying to yourself, well, my card drawing can take things away, because truthfully, you know, your opponent has had cards in their hand for a while now, so what do you think they're realistically holding? It wouldn't surprise me at all if I'm Royce to have this thing get Heroes Downfall. Sure, but, uh, okay, I, I guess I see your point. Am so, I getting the max use out of this, assuming that it's going to die immediately? Yeah, but I mean, do you want to left in your hand against a deck that has duress and thoughts he's too. Yeah, it's of all, course. Royce might just have to cast it there and, and do the best that he can. Here's an attack. So Cohen will gain a little bit of life again. Now there's the pack rat. And Cohen's still coming out ahead right now simply because Walter's activating his connections. Yeah. So, so they, they keep gaining and dealing each other the same amount of damage but Walter keeps tinging himself a little bit with connections. However, that card advantage could let him run away with the game. I just see it's 23 to eight right now. We could be in the makings of a repeat of what happened the last time where it looked like Royce had the edge, but Pack Rat plus Blood Baron just trumped Blood Baron. In comes Blood Baron again. So Walter's gonna go up to 12. Cone's gonna go back down to 19. You saw Mutaball get played from Walter that turn. I think he has a Pack Rat to play of his own here potentially. Yeah, looks like he does. So he's still keeping up pretty well. It's getting a little convoluted here, but a card like Bioblight can really blow things up here too, which Cohen does have in his hand. He'll have to be pretty careful about how he opts to use that card as he does discard a swamp very quickly to make a pack rat. Has the makings of a very odd game. Keep in mind, Royce also has the ability to chump block with Mutabolt. So this balancing back and forth of life totals that you've seen here with Royce slowly going down because of the Underworld connections, he can save himself Four points of damage at any time with a Mutaball chump block. Oh, Blood Baron comes rumbling in again. And 23 to 8. You see a duress, a hero's downfall, and a bottle right there for Cohen. And now he's got to try to figure out what to do. Because even though it feels like he's ahead right now, he can't feel great about his position. It felt like he was ahead before Royce had a pack rat of his own. As long as they're, the stuff that's in play is at relative parity, I feel like Royce has an edge here because of the connections. So it looked like Noah was in a position to gain a substantial advantage, and now that's become much more complicated. And Royce has a lot of chump blockers to work with for pack rat. You know, he's got his Mutavaults and the Elspeth tokens currently. But that life total is a factor on Royce's side, as you mentioned. Yeah, almost certainly. No, we're really going to take his time here. And decides, okay, I'm not going to fire off the rest. That's not going to do all that much. I can just make two pack rats instead if I wanted to. So, Walter will make a rat here. He might have a response, however. Play. I, this could get interesting here. I think Noah needs to trap a little bit more with this hero's downfall. I think so. Well, there's not a lot to be gained by killing the rat right now. And Royce might get, you know, something 
bad happens to him in combat if he gets too aggressive here. Yeah, this is where things get real tough. I'm gonna discard make a rat here. Oh. So I see what he's trying to oh, set up. Oh, I see. He's making his gonna try to bio blight him here. Yeah, I see what he's trying to set up. He makes his rats into four fours. Yeah. With the mutavolt. And then tags Royce's. Mm -hmm. Smart play. Though he can't really do it because Royce has access to a lot of mana and muta vaults. Yeah, he's got muta vaults, so maybe a bit of a misstep there. So I mean, it's you still, saw what he was thinking. Still fine for Noah to make. I still think it's still totally fine there for Noah to make a rat. Yeah. Connections activation is going to put Walter down to seven. Again, Walter winning in the card advantage battle right now. You could even say he's winning in the board advantage battle as well, just a little bit behind in the life game. Bloodbearer gonna push him back up to 11. You know, the big question is, when are we gonna see a play that I think we're eventually will see, which is blocking the Bloodbearer with the Muta Vault and then bio-blighting it, or killing yeah. it some way, so that Royce is unable to gain life? Will we see that line of play from Cohen? As another pack rack comes down for Walter. Here's three mana. Gonna discard Hero's Downfall to make a rat. Cohen will draw. Looked like it may have been a copy of Bile Blight. So here comes Blood Baron again. Cohen's gonna go up to 23 yet again. Walter's gonna go down to seven. Looks like it was another rat for Cohen. Very similar to what Walter's last turn was. Strange game. I haven't seen one like this. Yeah, this is bizarre. They both have the same stuff. They both can't really do anything. Except for Walters has connections, and Cohen doesn't. But even then, it's not clear how much more he can, you know, use these connections. He does risk a lot of bad things happening if, you know, the all spell tokens get bio-blighted away, and then he's forced into combat. So that will be a rat token, I believe. So as you mentioned, yeah, none of these players are really in a position to move just yet. Yeah, it's just Blood Parents kind of running in each other, and then Walter just kind of dinging himself one point at a time with connections, which again could play in to Cohen's favor. Down to six goes Royce. Draws a card. I have to imagine this is a little bit on unfamiliar territory for both of the players, too. It's a tough game to proceed, and both the players have to respect the other player's ability to either win or generate an insurmountable advantage kind of out of nowhere from this kind of spot. Yep, so another rat's going to get made. You see the light total is 19 to 10 now. Time to draw. See what Cohen finds this turn. Just a swamp. That one's pretty useless. So here's the easy part. The attack, 23 to 6. It's a weird thing. Usually one player gets a pack rat edge and it's just out in front. I've never yeah. seen I've never seen pack rat parody like this before. Not not in this fashion. So we're gonna discard Godless Shrine, make another rat token. Someone's getting fired. Yeah. Almost assuredly. <laughs> it's not enough tokens, you know? Who are we going to fire? So another rat token. Now, Walter falling to five. I mean, getting a little hairy. Another Blood Baron, though. Another Let's Blood Baron is a lot of protection. Yeah, let them break parity on this nonsense, finally. Yeah, and right now he has the rats covered. 
Although if Noah, say, Bile Blights the Elspeth tokens, makes a rat, untaps, can threaten to make a rat with his Muta Vault, if Roy steps out for this Blood Baron, yeah, I don't even think he can do it right now. I think it's too risky. There's another rat token. Drew a copy of Pack Rat. So there's an attack. 23 to 5. This is a bizarre game. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen anything like it. It feels, it, it, it's it's really weird to say, but it feels like to me, you know, Royce is going to activate his connections and go down to four, and then that's where Noah gets to make his move mm -hmm. of, you know, block with my Mutavolt, kill my Mutavolt, and yeah. then try to kill you with the Blood Baron. It feels like that's kind of what's, what we've been setting up the entire time, but it's not like Royce is incorrect in activating his connections over and over again. Of course he's supposed to do that. Yeah, Noah's not attacking. I mean, you know, it's not like Noah's racing him at all. The damage is just parity right now. She's going to attack first. I think that's really important. Yeah. He attacks first before, atta before activating the connections. He goes up to nine. Now he's going to deploy the second Blood Baron. So there's five mana. All these pack rats out here. And Noah's doing some counting here because he doesn't have that, that that big of an edge in total rats to be able to kill Royce. His rats are so big. He's got six rats total, as does Royce. So they both have the same amount of rats. Bile Blight could take care of those soldier tokens. But Noah gets to untap, make a seventh rat, or make a seventh rat and a turn. Also, untap make a rat just to pump his rats. Yep, that's the seventh rat right now. There's an obs of that. That's interesting. I wonder how that changes things. Well, it's coming down, so we're going to find out right now. Yeah. There's the ghost council. Yeah, Noah cannot kill with pack rat this turn, so he's probably better served just casting obs of that. So down to seven, and then the Blood Baron's going to attack him down to three. And now, yep, not, no sense in keeping it around. So now down to two. Yeah, that thing's not blocking, so. Yeah. Yep, down to two. Draw a card from Connections. It's the third Blood Baron. Discard Life Bane Zombie here to make another rat. So there's another token. About gummed up as a board I've ever seen in this matchup. This is bizarre. In come the two Blood Barons. Walter up to 10. Cohen down to 17. And I think we're even going to see just deploy third Blood Baron. Yep. After all this time, Royce Walter is finally making some ground here. Yep. And now it's very hard for Noah to catch up. Yeah, the third Blood Baron is just too good at blocking this turn and then too good at attacking next turn. 19 to 8. You said it right at the top. You liked Royce Walter's deck list because he has Underworld connections. Yeah, it feels like a huge edge in this matchup. Is it better than the list overall? Hard for me to say. It does come with certain costs, but looks better right now. It is much better than Sign and Blood would be. I don't know how many cards Royce has drawn off of at this point. Probably five or six. See Walters at four. But now he's starting to climb up more instead of being a parody or slowly climbing down via connections. Code deciding what to do with his Ovs at app. It's another spot where I don't feel like he can really block. Yeah, it's kind of strange actually to see opposite out in the field and see it be, its size be irrelevant. Yeah. Normally the, thing, the fact that that's a 5-5 five -five normally matters quite a bit. Not now. Walter going to draw a card. With connections, make a pack rat here. Discarding a Temple of Silence. 
So how about another rat token? Time to untap everybody. Andrew all card. Wonder if Royce is contemplating an even larger attack at this point. Uh, Barons are probably good enough. Probably good to just stay the course and not do anything risky. Yeah, here's some vaults. That's going to take care of one Blood Baron. Not a bad block. Yeah, getting one of them off the table is a big victory here for Noah. Watching your opponent gain 12 is uh, not the best thing I've ever seen. So now that's going to come back. So Cohen will gain two. Walter will lose two. So 17 to 13. That's now in comes the Blood Baron. So Royce looks like he's making his move here to double block and then double block again. Jeez. Yeah, the timing here is a little shoddy. So both players want to make sure that the communication was pretty clear. Yeah. I don't think a word exists where he would catch all four mutables with a single bio blight, you know? I think he would say, activate, activate two of my mutables, double block, and, you know, before you get to block, bio blight them both, okay, after my other two, and double block. Yeah, it's a spot where the, the specifics of the verbal communication matter quite a bit. Yeah. But I believe that's what would happen a high percentage of the time. So you kind of see the hand motioning and the back and forth on what's exactly happening here. But I don't think there's a world where Noah would catch all four, uh, all four mutavaults with a bio blight. But we'll see what the judges' ruling will be here and what will take place in just a moment. So it looks like the damage is through. There's a backup Blood Baron that was drawn, but can't cast it right now due to the lack of land, so. You had to Bile Blight. I guess didn't necessarily have to, but. Oh, uh, now there's an Erebos that Royce has found, and now. That's not good. It's pretty bad news here for Noah, because forget everything else about that thing being, uh, you know, five power, indestructible creature. Yeah, no, that matters. Players, opponents can't gain the life. I don't know if Noah can beat from here. Yeah. Last There's your attack for eight. Cone's going to go down to nine. Or it's going to go up to 20. And, you know, as much as we've been thinking about, okay, what's the best card that Royce or Noah could draw? Maybe have been Erebus all along. And that's not a card that Cohen has access to. Yeah. Well, let's not forget that Erebus is turned on from the many, many pack rats and Blood Barons, along with Underworld Connections, that is in play. Yeah, Royce's deck definitely feels much better suited for the mirror match. Yeah. And the uh, the one Erebus in the sideboard is another big deal to that end. Royce will take four, but Noah won't gain anything. There goes Hopes and Ab. Now, is Royce ahead on board? Because, uh, you know, the eight come across from the Blood Baron. There's also Mutavolts. Mutavolts. Soldier tokens. The soldier tokens. I think he just has too many attackers to blockers at this I point. I think that's true. Because eight points of damage is guaranteed. We'll see if he sees that play. I believe he's ahead on board right yeah. now. Yeah. Erebos also an attacker. Yeah, I mean, the soldier tokens are lethal. There's just no way he doesn't have. Yeah, you see him. Do, he's doing the count. So now you know he's saying, okay, how many how many blockers do you have? I've got two mutavolts to you. Everybody's coming in here. Noah realizes it as well. And we're going to head to a third and final game here between Royce Walter and Noah Cohen in the black-white mid-range mirror. Man, that was weird. I haven't seen one like that. that I have not a, seen a game like that. That was a weird game. And that one took a little while. And so now both players may have to go back to the drawing board. They're going to have to give each other's cards back due to sleeves and Nightfield Spectre taking place there. That was a game I thought Noah was going to run away with. Yeah, it seemed very good for him. But I think Underworld Connections was the difference in that game. It was a close one, though. It was a close one. And we'll see if either player does go back to the drawing board. It looks like they are going to do that. And while they do that, we're going to talk about our modern Premier IQs and our Premier IQs in general that we've begun running here back in the Star Cities Open Series in Baltimore. And we'll be doing moving forward here at all our Open Series events. So every Sunday, 10 a.m. start, modern Premier IQs are going to be occurring at all Open Series events. The, modern, uh, the Premier IQs, excuse me, in general are $5,000 in cash prizes, opens points to all participants, top four receive invites to the Invitational and much more. 
we will always be running them as modern events at the Open Series. But if you want to run them as a store owner or a tournament organizer, you can also apply for these things at the local level. They can be whichever format the store wants at that point. And we have many that we've already run outside of the Open Series and many more slated for 2014 as well. So uh, if you're interested in bringing these to your store or your tournament organizer trying to bring these to your area, uh, contact Star City Games today, help get these set up. The three that we've run so far have been well attended, so we do appreciate all the players coming out to that as far as results are concerned. Pod did win the first one. Kent Ketter of Nerd Rage Gaming did win the second. And then we saw Black Rain Rock win again the third. So I'll have a watchful eye on our modern Mirai IQ that does take place here this weekend. All three of them that we've had thus far have broken 100 attendees. We had oh, over yeah. 200 in Baltimore, so they've been very well attended so far. If you like modern, this is the place to be. But if you want to run from Mirai IQs, as Patrick did say, your store owner, your tournament organizer can do it. And it can be any format you want. So pretty cool stuff there. And we look forward to hosting more of these in the future. Definitely come on out to the Open Series if you'd like to play some modern, finally here. Yeah, it's exciting stuff, and having it not come at the expense of standard or legacy is, is really exciting for us. Speaking of legacy, I'm excited for that this weekend. Yeah, in Syracuse? Yeah, you got to be kidding me with that. Jupiter Games, those people, those players, they love legacy. We, saw, we watched the Yuka Seas uh, briefly here play standard. And while he's a great Magic player, legacy is his forte. James Rinkle is as well. To me, there's three really awesome legacy scenes in the United States, Los Angeles, Baltimore, and Syracuse. Those yeah. are my three choices. Yep. And it's interesting because Syracuse is by no means a large city. No. But nope. it does have an incredible legacy scene. I am really looking forward to watching the legacy tournament here tomorrow. Should be well attended, and there will be a lot of great players. Legacy is their forte. I'm sure they're thrilled about Grand Prix, New Jersey. Yeah, getting one close to home. Close-ish. I mean, it's still a drive, but it's drivable. Yeah, but how far? Do you know? I would You've say this before. probably about in the four to four and a half That's hour range. Nothing. That's nothing. That'd be nothing for you back in the day. No, that would be nothing. You're in your infamous Tampa drive. Yeah. Toronto for the Team PTQ, where I was already qualified and playing with people that I wouldn't have played with even if I won the Team PTQ. That was that one was a little much. Another real doozy. That was a doozy. We were actually talking about that this morning, the 13-hour drive that I took to Omaha, Nebraska from Purdue. I also didn't realize how far away Memphis was from Purdue. Yep. It's like eight or nine hours. Yeah. I didn't know that. Memphis I, is on the western side of the state, right? Of yeah, Tennessee. Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize that. I thought it was like four. So I, my friend just came and picked me up for Worlds that year. We hopped in a car, and I'm like, sweet, we'll be there in like four hours, maybe three and a half if we drive fast. And he's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's however long, nine hours. It was not short. Not short. It was not short. I also had $100 no hotel to stay in, but I made it. <laughs> I made it. Not the best decision I've ever made, but certainly not the worst. Yeah, except that back then we could not fathom making any other decision but that one. So. <laughs> yeah. So not the worst I've made. I'm sure 10 years from now we'll be making fun of what, you know, decisions we're making now. That's true. how these things go. That's true. A tempo of silence to begin things. Here for Noah. Looks like Walter did take a mulligan. Walter will draw a card. Does he have the first discard spell? Yes, he does, and it's a thought seize. Noah Cohen's hand is a sin collector. There's no hopes of that. There's a night fail, there's night fail specter, excuse me. Ultimate prize of hero's downfall and the second lands of swamp. Interested to see exactly what Cohen did keep on top with that temple. Well, no, I think put to the bottom. Did and I, bottom? yeah, I think he's just, I think anything that's not a land is just straight to the bottom. I think even, I think with this opening hand, there's a good chance, even if Pack Rat was the top card of his deck, that that would be sent to the bottom. So Royce wants to take, this is another tough decision on what you're supposed to take here. It's like, let price. Draw a card. What a thought sees. Take that. You trying to set something up? Yeah, you were. It yeah, was Pack Rat. I was about to say that taking ultimate price there stinks of Pack Rat. And not only is it Pack Rat, but it's Pack Rat and nothing else. Yeah, four lands, two Muta Vaults of Caves, and a Temple of Silence. Now it's very important for Noah to draw a third land as Walter is going to play a Temple of Silence. Put that top card to the bottom before passing the turn back over to Cohen. Let's see if he's able to peel this one. He is. It's just coming to play tap, though. No, it'll, t no, it'll take it. Yep. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure he would rather have a swamp here, but this will do. Uh, leaves his card on top, because we're going to be about, we're going to be under five minutes here shortly. But Royce here with a huge top deck. Yeah, this was big underworld connections out of nowhere. 
Swamp is the draw. This is an IPL Spectre. This demands an answer very, very quickly as Walter will draw a card. It's a Swamp. Down to 17, he goes. Let's see what this is. That's a Pack Rat. And we know there are two Muta Vaults over there, so this game could change quite a bit. Yep. Pack Rat is not shabby here either. Yeah, and there is the Pack Rat. So, Cohen's going to untap. He'll draw a card. Dia's side is huge to take care of that connections. Yeah. Although, oh, oh well, that's even bigger. His own. <laughs> okay, then. The thing with the the problem with Dia's side here is is Royce doesn't necessarily need the connections at this point. He can just go straight down the pack rat yeah. road. Well, not anymore. Get that out of here. Yeah. Okay. I agree with you. You know, if he could play two spells in one turn, that's perfect, obviously, but he couldn't do that. So, Hero's Downfall, get that thing out of here. This is another copy of Pack Rat with the necessary mana to cast it. So now Cohen's got to really get moving now. He, finding a land here would be perfect as he attacks with the Spectre. That's a Muta Vault. That and might be the best land he could find. Yeah, I mean, now he's got the perfect double black, double white, and a colorless for Obzadad if yep. he wants it. Let's see what he wants to cast. Getting everything right right now is so crucial. And he's got about four minutes to make his decisions in. I mean, he has a couple options here. He can sign in blood, sync collector. He can DSI, sync collector. He can just cast over to that. Put the pressure on. Yeah. Given the clock, I like putting the pressure on. I think that's what would, that's what would tip my hand in this situation. I don't have a lot of time to really mess around. I think I prefer Obzadat in this spot because not only are you kind of happy just trying to damage race at the stage, but also your Sync Collector is more likely to hit the following turn mm -hmm. if you allow Royce to draw and draw with the Underworld Connections. That's exactly what he's going to do. Uh, looks like he's going to make a pack, right? Okay, I thought he, might, thought he might activate Connections, but we'll make sure we do get our life totals updated here because they're going to be changing pretty quickly. And this is why, you know, I thought that Noah may not de he may de-emphasize the connections on the other side of the table a little bit because Royce is just doing this now. The connections are might as well not be even in play. Sure, sure. He's just pack ratting now. Yeah. So that's also 20 11 here. The one thing about pack rat that we all know, it can close out a game real fast. I mean, if if Royce makes a rat here when he attacks, then that is 10 coming across. Yeah. It does not take long at all. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to discard his last card, which under Underworld Connections. There's a rat. In we go. Muta Vault is hanging out. I think he wants to use it as insurance in case Noah has Bioblight. What happens there is if he attacks with Muta Vault, then at, at the end of the turn, Royce uses the connections. He is dead to rights to Bioblight. Destroyed by Bioblight. Okay. Yeah, so I think... He wants the extra damage to come across, but he doesn't want to incur that risk. Okay. So it's eight points of damage. Gotcha. Cone on tap. Oh, that's going to come back. 14 and nine. All right, let's see what Noah draws. A Muta Vault. Now, the upshot of this is that Royce is still in a ton of trouble if Noah finds Bioblade just because of the swing and the damage race. Here come both the creatures. Now Royce has really got to think, okay, I probably have to block this, this, uh, this Obsidat. Well, he's, if he doesn't block here, he's taking 70 dice to the Obsidat trigger. Yeah. So something's got to give here. Rocking a hard place, as it were. And if he animates the Mutaball to chump block, then he's back in the same spot with Bioblight, which was something he was clearly worried about last turn. Yep. So there's your chump block. And that's why he's chumping like this, because he cannot risk Bioblight. Or at least he's, he's gone down that road for himself. Temple of Silence, the card turned over from the Spectre. We'll see what Code wants to deploy this turn, knowing he's not dead next turn for sure. He's going to play Mutavolt. He's looking at Sign and Blood, which can actually target Royce if necessary. We can't forget about that, even though we haven't seen it happen here yet on SCG Live. City Collector as well. City Collector could be a body that's just cast and thrown out there. Could also deploy the Underworld Connections as well. Yeah, I think I like just casting D aside here. Royce probably draws a card. 
You can then cast in Collector. If you drew a spell, you get to tag it, and you get to keep the Sign and Blood in your hand for potential burnouts in a turn or two. Yeah, I think that one's going upstairs. Yeah. Looks like we're going to lead on Sin Collector. Yeah. Let's just target you. I know you've got nothing. Yeah, I, see, I think he came to the same conclusion and shoot it just backwards. Yeah, I think yeah. This, is, this, is a, this is an order of operations mistake for sure. Yep. He could have done this in the other order, and if, if Royce found a spell, Noah would have gotten it. Yeah, let's see if he does find one. Don't get a good look at that card. There it goes over to that. You can tell the connections activation put him to six. This will be turn one of extra turns. And Royce drew a Thought Seize, which I guess is technically a spell, though not one I think he's going to be casting. It's a spell, not one he's going to cast, but taking a card away from Pack Rat. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. But keep in mind, you know, right now, the way things are, that upset that trigger, that's four. Night Veil Spectre is uncontested. That's two. That's, that's, that's Royce down to two. Sign and Blood is zero. Yep. So Royce does not know this, but Noah does have the kill set up. It's very disguised. Yeah. The kill setup. It is very, very disguised. Especially if you're Royce, you don't know about, you know, maybe Sign Blood's not on your radar right now. In comes that. Going to put him down to four. Cohen's up to 16. Turn number two here of extra turns. Noah going to draw. See a Temple of Silence there. No, it's trying to figure out if there's any way to get Royce to tap down and make some rats here. Because it is risky. Because Royce could have Devour Flesh. Yeah, got to fire up some Muta Vaults, get in here with a whole bunch of creatures. This is a strange thing to say here. It looks like we're going to see a pack rat, but you know, it's very realistic. One, because that sign of blood is textless. Textless, excuse me, and two, Noah is 16. Pretty I young. know, I think he's got this line of play set up. Yeah, I don't, you, you, you wonder if he knows that sign of blood can target the opponent. Just saying. There's no way he makes this alpha strike unless he's just trying to get Royce yep. to tap down. All right, you there you see the sign of blood, and that's going to do it. Noah Cohen's going to win this match over Royce Walter. Two games to one, and the youngster moves on to six and one. Very well. Now